unit testing is a great way to validate your code, to make code changes safer, and to document how your systems operate. However, there is room for some improvements. That's where Fluent Assertions come in. This third-party library allows you to create easy-to-read assertions for your unit tests, making reading the tests much easier. Let's see how they work in 10 minutes or less. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need a quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10-minute training series. So let's dive right into Visual Studio. In here, I've already built out a, a quick little project, obviously class library one and test project one. Not exactly the greatest names. I just want to get something up quick for you. So this is a X unit project. Um, and what I've done is I've built this little class library that all it has is one class in it called sample class, which has first name and last name and full name. In the constructor, you pass in full name, and then you split that full name into first name and last name. And the eagle eyed among you may notice right away that there's probably some bugs here with this split full name. And we're going to dive into that in a little bit. But for now, we're going to pretend like we are just completed this. We just got this to work, and things are great. We actually created a sample test project and we started writing out some tests. So for example, test the full name property, just making sure that when you pass in a full name, you get a full name back. And this is a typical X unit project. We have our range act assert, and the assert is assert.equal, full name and actual name, and we make sure those two are equal. And then I have, and of course, these are theories, which means you can pass in a couple of different entries. So Tim Corey and Sue Storm. Now, um, if you're not familiar with unit testing or specifically X unit, I do have a video on this channel covering an intro to unit testing that goes over X unit and how to use it and even how to use the theories. But essentially what a theory is just runs this twice. So there's two tests here instead of one. And down here we have test the first name property. So we create the, the new class and then we test to make sure that the actual first name is comparable to what we expect the first name to be. So that's our assert.equal. And again, this is all basic X unit stuff. And again, we're doing the same thing with last name. Let's just run this real quick to make sure that, in fact, we have six passing tests, and we do. So you have six passing tests, these all work. But one of the things that you'll find, even when you write unit tests, sometimes you forget about the edge cases where you know, right now we're testing what I call the happy path, which is, okay, a name is going to be Tim space Corey. Something very, very simple and easy, but there are names out there that, that aren't really that simple. And so we need to make sure we test for that. What may happen is you might write this class and you write these tests and go, everything's passing, cool. Let's put this in production. And then you find out you have a bug. And then what you do is, especially you're following test-driven development, um, but either way, you should probably create a test to make sure you can test for that failing case. In our case, the failing case would be if it's not just first name, space, last name. For example, let's bring this up here. I have this um, test edge case names. So our example here is Eddie Van Halen. Well, what's the first name and what's the last name? Well, last name would be Van Halen. But how are we going to process that? Okay, so right now the system isn't going to work. So we're going to create is a failing unit test. We want to make sure that we test this and validate that um, the last name should be Van Halen. It's not going to be. It's going to be Halen or it can be Van. It'll probably be Van um, because of the fact that we just said grab the item at the, at the uh, one position. So. It's going to say Van when we expect Halen or Van Halen, sorry. Um, so let's, you know, write a test for that. Now we could follow the normal procedure, but instead what we're going to do is use fluent assertions. Now if we go to dependencies, manage nuget packages, the browse, you can look for fluent assertions right here, downloaded 250 million times. Well done to the creators. They create something the community really likes. 
So um, you might be familiar with this already because of the fact of how many people use this. And of course, there's a whole bunch of different things to add on to it, but that's the Nougat package you need. Now, in my case, I've added two using directives at the top, using Fluid Assertions and also using a Fluid Assertions execution. We'll see that second one in a minute. And I'll call it out. But for now, the very simple thing we can do is say we have sample class dot last name should be last name. That's where our um, our fluent assertions come in. Should be last name. That's going to be a case sensitive. Notice that um, casing and leading and trailing weight spaces are going to be the same. So we're going to compare and say, hey, this should be Van Halen. Okay, that's one way of doing this. And if we were to now run these tests, we'll see we have a failing unit test. There we go. So we expected the last name to be Van Halen with a length of nine, but Van has a length of three. Okay, so that's our, um, that's our difference and that's the exception we have with this, but maybe we want to get even further detailed into the results. Now for us, we don't need to, we have the last name we have what the expected last name should be and the actual, which is what this does. But maybe you want to test a little further. Maybe you want to say, um, let's go with sample class dot last name should start with, and let's, um, Let's start with a, um, a last name, substring, zero comma three. So it should start with these first three characters, right? Okay, obviously we can just do a full comparison, but let's just say we're doing this and we wanna do another comparison. Let's take our semicolon off. And in fact, let's bring us down a new line and we're gonna come down a new line and say, and ends with, and let's compare the last three characters. And contains, not dough, contains a space, something like that. Now we have this ability to chain these things together and do a multiple comparisons at once. And if we run this, let's run this again. And now it says that um, it expects the sample class last name Vand and with L-E-N. Well, that's not right. Um, yes, it is because it's at the end with L-E-N. It started with Van, so that was correct, but it's supposed to end with this. So that's where we have a difference. Now, sometimes you want more than one test to show up together. Okay, so let's say if we have both of these tests running. Now, of course, this is a contrived example, but if we have both of these tests running and it runs and it says the error message for this test and it stopped, but maybe we don't wanna do that. Let's say using var, don't care about the name, that's a discard character, equals, and what we're gonna do here is say new assertion scope. And that's where this other using directive comes in. This one right here, the execution. But the assertion scope is gonna allow us to put all these together. Now you could put the curly braces for the using um, here and wrap both of these, but since it's all there is in the method, we can now run this and you run this and get the error message. We'll see that the error message There you go, has three different error messages in it, okay? So it's saying, hey, here's all the problems you have with this assertion that allows you to give much more detailed tests and much more readable and understandable views into why your test is failing. So that's Fluent Assertions and just kind of getting started with this. I encourage you to check it out. I'll leave a link down in the description to Fluent Assertions as well in case you wanna see more documentation. Thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.